Coming up on today's show, we're going to recap the latest Cortland Sutton trade rumors. And then for the second half of the video, we're going to look at five reasons why Bo Nix is a perfect fit for the Denver Broncos. But let's recap all the trade rumors surrounding Sutton because before the draft got underway, Jared Bailey from USA Today tweeted out, both the LA Rams and Pittsburgh Steelers reached out to the Broncos before and during the NFL draft inquiring about wide receiver Cortland Sutton per source. The star receiver is seeking a new deal as his current contract only has $2 million in guaranteed money remaining. The Broncos don't want to move Sutton as they believe that he and new quarterback, quarterback Bo Nix, can be Sean Payton's new Drew Brees and Michael Thomas. So we had that from Jared Bailey from USA Today, and that kind of got the snow or the uh, yeah snowball rolling because Benjamin Albright tweeted out just this gif alone of reunited and it feels so good, and that definitely caught some fire on the web of Broncos fans going, ooh, wonder who he could be referring to, right? Could it be a uh, Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton reunion potentially? Well. And then we had Mike Kliss kind of chime in, quote tweeting CTESPN, Antonio Brown, which I never thought I would ever say those words. But Mike Kliss, the uh, absolute gem that he is, saying it's not Cortland Sutton when it comes to the Steelers looking for a big name wide receiver. No plans to trade him as Peyton and Peyton let Bronco land know in recent weeks. Sutton is in good standings. I don't envision a Cortland Sutton trade. It doesn't look like Denver wants to trade him. It doesn't look like Cortland Sutton wants to be traded. If so, he probably would have just requested a trade by now. So I know the $2 million in guaranteed money remaining for the last two years of his contract has been a topic of discussion as he did not report to voluntary workouts, but so early in the offseason process, no alarm bells are going off in my head at all right now. But there definitely is something that could boil up here if the $2 million in guaranteed money remaining is a big deal to Sutton and the Broncos have zero plan in changing the language or the layout of his contract. The only chance I could actually see Sutton getting traded is if Pittsburgh gets desperate. And that might not even be before the season starts, right? That could be a mid-season trade. If Denver is unfortunately not off to a great start and the Pittsburgh Steelers are like at 500 and they feel like we're one playmaker away, let's go get Russell Wilson, his old number one target from Denver, and we're going to pay more than what the Broncos think Cortland Sutton is worth. I don't think all those things are very likely to happen, but if you're looking for a small chance of a trade actually going through, I think it's because Pittsburgh just reeks of disparity. Because their wide receiver room right now, after trading Deontay Johnson to the Panthers, is a little shaky. Like, George Pickens is an ascending player, but he can be a handful at times, and he's not necessarily the most consistent guy week to week. They've got a rookie in Roman Wilson, who is just that, a rookie. Van Jefferson has slowly been on the downhill since his kind of peak days with the Rams three, four years ago. Calvin Austin has been really nothing more than a special teamer so far for Pittsburgh. So if the Steelers want to give Russell Wilson or Justin Fields the most amount of weapons to work with, I could see them picking up the phone and making phone calls for guys like Cortland Sutton and Brandon Ayuk. Doesn't mean a trade's going to happen. But I wouldn't be surprised if Pittsburgh has expressed interest in Cortland Sutton. So if a trade were to happen, maybe it looks something like this. I don't think the Steelers want to give up a third-round pick for Sutton, but I don't think the Broncos want to trade Cortland Sutton. So they're not going to move on from him unless it's for an offer they just can't refuse. And maybe a third-rounder would be something that Denver considers, although I don't think it's like an automatic, whoa, we have to take this offer now. I just think it's a rough idea as to what a trade in disparity could look like in desperation for the Pittsburgh Steelers to at least make Denver consider trading Sutton. So would you trade Cortland Sutton? This is the pinned comment on today's video. Scroll on down. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. His value is pretty high right now coming off a 10 touchdown season. There are pros and cons to the idea of trading Cortland Sutton. I'm not going to just... Uh, mute and tune out the other side of the argument. 
I would not trade Cortland Sutton at this point. We're past the NFL draft, so if you were to trade Sutton, it's not like if you traded him two weeks ago, you could use that third, fourth, fifth round pick, whatever the Steelers gave you, on another wide receiver to replace Sutton. No, you wouldn't get a pick until next April, which means you're kind of down two guys for the 2024 season. You wouldn't have Sutton, and you wouldn't have his replacement until after the season is over. So, they're not going to offer you a first round or likely even a second rounder for Cortland Sutton. A third may catch my interest for sure, but at this stage, I want to do what's best for Bo Nix. And I don't think a third round pick is going to make me rush to the altar to trade Cortland Sutton away. Now, when you look at Denver's wide receiver room, they've got Marvin Mims, Josh Reynolds, Tim Patrick, Brandon Johnson, a guy I'm really high on, Troy Franklin. Like There are some good cast members in this wide receiver room. I don't think it's a top 10 wide receiver room in the NFL. Uh, Cortland Sutton last year, you can look at his stats over the last four seasons, uh, comes off a 10 touchdown campaign where I think we're seeing Sutton maybe struggle a little bit with the separation as he gets a little bit older and has that ACL injury in his rearview mirror. But I still think Sutton can play some good football for Denver in 2024. I think ultimately you have to support Bo Nix in year one. A third round pick may be tempting because I don't know how much gas Sutton really has left in the tank and if Denver views him as a guy they plan on giving another contract to since he only has this year and next year remaining. But it's not like a third round pick is a lock to be some bona fide star. So I would say keep Cortland Sutton and make sure Bo Nix has some good pieces to work with in his rookie year. Now next up is I've got five reasons why Bo Nix is a good fit for the Broncos. It's no secret that this would not be the pick I would make if I was in charge, but I'm just an armchair YouTube GM right now, so that's very much okay with me. But I'm going to run through five reasons why I think Bo Nix is a good fit for the Broncos. But first, speaking of Bo Nix, his jerseys are available on Fanatics. Go to chatsports.com slash Nix. Now, the number has not been announced as I film. Right before the draft started, Zach Wilson picked number 10 which is what Bo Nix wore in high school, at Auburn, and at Oregon. So my suspicion is he's probably trying to work something out with Zach Wilson and try to get number 10 back from him. Zach Wilson wore like one and two, if I remember correctly, at BYU and with the Jets. So I'm not really sure why he wants number 10. Uh, quarterbacks have to be numbers 1 through 19. So pretty quickly you can see how number some numbers get taken up and you're kind of limited to the remaining options. But regardless, once Bo Nix picks his jersey number, if you order right now, they'll ship that jersey to you the moment the number is announced. So I put that link for you all in the comments and description of today's video. Now let's run through my five reasons why Nix is a good fit for the Denver Broncos. Go five to one. Coming in at number five, he's NFL ready. You guys know how the expression goes. If they are super old and got lots of experience and it's for your team, it's a benefit because it means they have lots of experience. He actually holds the NCAA record for most quarterback starts with 61. He surpassed a Texas quarterback. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe Colt McCoy or Colt Brennan uh, in October. Um, someone fact checked me in the comment section. But when you look at all six quarterbacks that went round one in this past draft, Bo Nix has the most starts ahead of Jaden Daniels, ahead of Michael Penix by a good chunk, um, Caleb Williams, 33. Drake May, I don't think people fully realize just how, I wouldn't say raw of a prospect he is. He played two seasons for UNC, but he definitely could benefit from sitting for more than just like a week or two. I wouldn't be shocked if Drake May sees little action in 2024. Reason number four, he gets the ball out quickly. When you go back to the 2024 season and you read the tea leaves of Sean Payton's frustrations with Russell Wilson and the quarterback play, he was frustrated with the amount of sacks Russell Wilson was taking and how the ball wasn't staying on schedule. Now, it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison whatsoever. But just to, you know, entertain you all, last year, Russell Wilson, according to Pro Football Focus, took 45 sacks. Bo Nix took six sacks. 
So there was definitely a big difference in the style of quarterback play where Russ, as we all remember from his time in Seattle, loved to hold on to the ball, which led to a lot of sacks, but it led to some really fun highlight moments, whereas Nix likes to get this ball in his hands and get it out quickly. And when you go back to Sean Payton and Drew Brees' time together towards the end in New, in New Orleans, you can see that Drew Brees also liked to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Every single year that progressed towards the end of his career, as he got older, he stopped taking those hits because he got the ball out quickly. Number three, conservative with the football. So not only is Bo Nix a good fit for Sean Payton because he gets the ball out and doesn't take sacks, but he's also very smart with the football, which, hey, everyone should be smart with the football, but some quarterbacks are bigger risk takers than others. Bo Nix is more on the conservative side. So once again, not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, but last year at Oregon, Bo Nix threw three interceptions, had three turnovers, and Pro Football Focus graded out that he only had four turnover-worthy plays. That would be like if Bo Nix, for example, threw it right to a DB and the guy dropped it. In most cases, that would have been an interception, but Nix got a little lucky there. So that's what turnover-worthy plays means. Russell Wilson, on the mean hand, he definitely decreased his turnovers from year one in Denver, but eight interceptions, he fumbled 10 times, he lost five of those fumbles, and PFF had him with 17 turnover-worthy plays. So the only big question that I have for Bo Nix beyond his ability to pass and push the ball down the field is, what's it going to be like when he goes up against an NFL pass rush? Because he always had a very clean pocket. And I've seen some people toss out, well, Bo Nix had a stellar offensive line. I don't remember any Oregon Ducks getting drafted on the offensive line in rounds one or two yesterday. And maybe they're underclassmen and we'll see them next year. But still, like if they're underclassmen, it's not like he had, you know, a lineup of all pro first round talent at his offensive line. Like Washington had two tackles get picked in the first two rounds of the draft. The same is not said for the Oregon Ducks. So we're going to find out what happens when Bo Nix deals with a much more messier pocket in the NFL than he did in college football. And that could be something we look back at as like, oh, yeah, maybe that was something that was overlooked because Bo Nix never had to deal with pressure. But he's got experience through college football to know what different fronts and defensive pressures look like and know how to get the ball out of his hands quickly and where to go with it based on the different defensive packages and looks he sees through his 61 starts in college football. Now, before we look at the next two reasons why Bo Nix is a good fit for Denver, if you are enjoying today's video, help us reach 22,000 subscribers. We're a little over 300 subs away, so I invite you to join the channel if you haven't already. Reason number two, solid supporting cast. I'm not going to feed you guys a line of BS that Bo Nix walks into a situation with a top five wide receiver room and a top five offensive line. But it's definitely solid. I think we've seen a lot worse out there. Go ask Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers about that last season. But when you look at his offensive line, I mean, Garrett Bowles and Mike McGlinchey, two solid to above average starters. Ben Powers, a solid to average uh, left guard. Quinn Miners, a Pro Bowl guard in my eyes. Sam Mustafer, I currently have like penciled in as the starter, but that will be a training camp battle to watch for. And that's definitely a big question mark. But whoever plays center will have two good guards to lean on in between them. But when you look at this offensive line, like you see Pro Bowl level talent, I think we can agree, right? In Garrett Bowles, Quinn Miners, and Mike McGlinchey. Not saying those three guys are going to be perennial, you know, year after year pro bowlers, but would anyone be surprised if at the end of their careers, all three of those guys made at least one pro bowl? No, I don't think so. So from the offensive line standpoint, it's pretty good. It's definitely top half in the league. I don't think it's the best O-line. Uh, from the wide receiver standpoint, got some question marks. Like, can Marvin Mims make a big jump in year two? Cortland Sutton was an awesome red zone threat, and he had some big plays to go along with it as well. Uh, wasn't just like a jump ball guy from the five-yard line, but can we see a little bit more yard production from Sutton? Josh Reynolds comes over from Detroit. 40 grabs, 608 yards, five touchdowns. Just going off the blind resume, that's not all that different than what Jerry Judy had last year for Denver. Plus, Bo Nix has a familiar face to throw to. They drafted in round number four his old teammate from Oregon, Troy Franklin. And so Franklin reunites with Bo Nix in Denver. So right there, you've got a connection growing. Again, I'm not arguing that these 
units are, you know, some of the best in the NFL, but I think solid is a pretty fair you fair use of the word to describe his offensive line and his receiving core. So I even took it a step further. I thought you guys might enjoy this. I looked at all six quarterbacks that went round one, and I just ranked them in my eyes as the best scenarios that they are stepping into. Now I am making the assumption in this uh, situation that all guy all six guys are starting, and that's not the case for Penix and McCarthy, and I even think Drake may quietly for week one. But Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Bo Nix are definitely much more in line to be week one starters than Penix, McCarthy, and May. But anyway, so what I looked at was, all right, let's evaluate all six quarterbacks based on their head coach, their wide receiver core, and their offensive line. I think Caleb Williams is stepping into the best situation. He's got the number one wide receiver unit out of all six of these teams with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Roma Junze. His offensive line is middle of the pack. And then there's just the element that he's Caleb Williams, but I'm even removing like the quarterback, you know, skill level. And if I could move all the quarterbacks around and whatnot, JJ McCarthy, I think is number two in line. Kevin O'Connell is a really good coach. He's got Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison to throw to. And his two tackles, Christian Darisaw and O'Neal are two of the best tackles in football. Bo Nix, I think has the best head coach of all six teams and Sean Payton. I think his wide receiver unit comes in fifth out of all six teams just ahead of the New England Patriots, but probably behind the Falcons, we've got Drake London and uh, Darnell Mooney, although you can make an argument to swap Broncos and Falcons for wide receivers. I think their offensive line is probably in the middle of the pack out of all six of these teams. Penix I have at number four. A lot of question marks about Raheem Morris round two as a head coach. Receiving unit I have fourth, and I think their offensive line is probably the best of all six units here. Uh, the Commanders, I think Jaden Daniels with Dan Quinn's got a third best head coach. Uh, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and the rest of the crew make the third best receiving core. And their offensive line is only fifth because the New England Patriots have the worst wide receiver units of all six of these teams and the worst offensive line out of all six of these teams. And just a big question mark with Gerard Mayo. So I got him at fifth right now. Or, uh, yeah, only ahead of the Chicago Bears head coach, Matt Eberflus, who I think is an idiot. All right, number one, though, my reason for Bo Nix being a good fit for Denver, Sean Payton picked him. If Sean Payton likes him. I'm not going to try and argue that I know more about quarterbacks than Sean Payton does. So if Sean Payton truly believes, like, this is the guy, all right, I'm not going to try and stand in the way of people getting excited about Sean Payton liking a quarterback. Sean Payton's never taken a quarterback in round one before, so this is a little bit of a new experiment for him. Um... He said he liked, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes so much that he was going to pick him at 11 if uh, the Chiefs didn't get him at 10. He's only like the 20th coach or GM to come out and say, you know, back in uh, that 2017 draft, I really liked that Texas Tech quarterback. Um, yeah, everyone seems to be coming out of the woodwork to say, by the way, I just want to put out there right now, I also like Patrick Mahomes a lot, but I was outvoted by my owner, so... We're not really sure exactly just how true all these coaches and GMs are about uh, just how much they loved but, uh, Patrick Mahomes with their hindsight being 2020. But sure, we'll roll with it. But will Bo Nix start week one? I feel like by the day, I'm almost warming up to this being a much more likely thing than I did when they first drafted him simply because I felt like Jared Stidham you know, was a guy that Sean Payton liked enough that he would go into training camp as the starter. And we'll see if whether or not Bo Nix can dethrone him as the starter. For now, I'm going to lean towards Jarrett Stidham remains the starter for this team. But it'll be something to watch for all mini camp and training camp long to see if Nix can take that number one starting job from Jarrett Stidham. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Really appreciate everyone for hanging out with us. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so.